This is a very short video about exponential functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.2. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number 8. The population in Atlanta, Georgia was 1 million in the year 2000. If the population continues to grow at a rate of 2.5% each year, what will be the population in the year 2030? How long will it take to reach a population of 4 million? When the output values are increasing or decreasing by the same percent over equal length input value intervals, we know we are dealing with an exponential function, which can be modeled like this, where f of t and f of k are two values of the function that we know. If we let t be the number of years since 2000, then the year 2000 itself is year 0. So we are given that f at 0 is 1 million. So that will be our f at k. We can find the common ratio r based on the fact that the population is growing at a rate of 2.5% each year. r will equal 100% plus 2.5%. If the population was decreasing by 2.5%, we would say 100 minus 2.5%. 100% plus 2.5% is 102.5%. When we substitute this back into the formula, it's best to write r as a decimal instead of a percent. So we will move the decimal point two times to the left, and r becomes 1.025. We can now write an equation for the population t years after 2000. f of t will equal f at k, in this case f at zero, times r, which is 1.025, to the t minus k power. That's t minus zero in this case. Obviously we do not need to write the minus zero, so I'm going to take that away. And f at zero is one million, so I'm going to substitute that in instead. We can now use this model to find the population in the year 2030. That will be 30 years after the year 2000. So we are looking for f at 30. That will be 1 million times 1.025 to the 30 power. Put this in the calculator. And there it is. In the year 2030, there will be about 2,097,567.579 people. Be prepared to round this to the nearest whole number since it's people, but um, I would only do that if they ask you to in the problem. We can also use the model to find out how many years it will take the population to reach 4 million. In other words, we need to solve the equation f of t equals 4 million for t. Let's do this in the graphing calculator. Put f of t in as y1, meaning put this model in as y1, and put 4 million as y2. On second thought, these numbers are very, very big. Uh, let's see if we can make these numbers smaller before using the calculator. Setting f of t equal to 4 million gives us this. We can make these numbers much smaller by dividing both sides by 1 million. So on the right hand side, we will simply have four. So in the calculator, let's let 1.025 to the t power be y1, and let's put four in as y2. We are going to need to adjust the window to see where these graphs intersect. When t equals 30, the population is just over two million people. So t will have to be significantly more than 30 before the population will be 4 million. So I'm going to let my x max be 60 and see where we are. Hit the window button 
and let's change x max to 60 years. This is standing in for the t. Let's go ahead and hit graph and see if we, if we can see the intersection point yet. Okay, we're just making it. We can see the intersection point right there. So let's go ahead and hit second trace and choose five for intersect. Move the pointer close to the point of intersection and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. So there it is. The population will reach 4,056.142 years after the year 2000. In other words, early in the year 2056. Instead of graphing, you can solve simple equations like this one using the equation solver. If you want to try that out, hit the math button and scroll up. The bottom option is the numeric solver, so just hit enter. Type in the left side of the equation as equation 1, and type in the right side of the equation as equation 2, and then just hit enter. And there's your solution. 56.142, which is the same answer that we got by graphing. Number 9. Determine if the following tables represent a linear function, quadratic function, exponential function, or none of those. Part A. First check to see if we have equal length input value intervals. We do. So now we can focus on the output values. If this is a linear function, the first differences will be constant. Since the first differences are not constant, f of x is not linear. Now let's check the second differences. If the second differences are constant, f of x is quadratic. The second differences are not equal, so f of x is not quadratic either. Finally, let's check for a common ratio to see if f of x might be an exponential function. You can find the ratios by dividing each term by the previous term. Since we do not have a common ratio, f of x is not exponential. So f of x is neither linear, quadratic, nor exponential. For part b, we first notice that we do have equal length input value intervals. So we can now focus on the output values. Since the first differences are not constant, g of x is not linear. Since the second differences are not constant, g of x is not quadratic either. Dividing each term by the previous term gives 1.5 every time. Since we see a common ratio, g of x is exponential. I want to be a little bit careful here. A common ratio is not all you need to have an exponential function. The ratio must be positive. So if this common ratio had been negative 1.5, we could have a geometric sequence but it would not be considered an exponential function. For part C, we once again have equal length input value intervals. So let's move on to the output values. We immediately see a common difference of negative eight. Since the first differences are constant, h of x is linear. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.